Hi, Peter Borker here and welcome to today's edition of The Transition Grinder. Back in the studio with me is Shannon Susco and we're going to continue on the theme of metronomics and actually in this week's episode I'm going to ask Shannon actually how did she come up with the word metronomics and what does it mean? So Shannon, welcome. Yeah, thank you. It's so great to be back. So metronomics, I mean, did you just <laughs> pluck that back? out of the air? What happened there? <laughs> well, you know, I think a lot of people think we did and, and thought we were on the bandwagon of all the other words that are made up off of, uh, you know, economics. But it was really built up with our team looking at uh, what really builds up the system that we have and that is metronomics. And we actually pulled three pictures together. One picture, as you can imagine, and what I'm known for is a metronome from the first book, Metronome Effect. So that was one picture we put up on the wall. The next one we put up, we said, well, you know, when you follow the system, you get great results, consistent results. You get incredible top line growth. And if you come all the way to the bottom line, which it's all about is forecast cash first, you achieve your cash goals. You put cash in the bank and you actually increase your cash flow. And you know, my clients are seeing doubling cash flow, right? That's not profit, cash, cash, wheelbarrow, walk away with it. But the third word and, and picture that we put up was, the, and it was a simple picture. It was like, you know, a stick box, right? It's had the word metric in it. And the reason we put that one up is that metric really represents, you know, a lot of people think it's a fiscal metric, but in our world, the thing that unlocked everything for us was the non-fiscal metric, which right. in our world is a widget. A widget is a thing that flows and things that flow through your company that your team owns, they control, and it can be owned by individuals and individuals all can own one widget that actually is related to another widget that's related to another widget that's related to your team goal. It's how you get the connection, the behavioral connection. And so we took a step back, we looked at these three pictures and why did we put them up? And the first picture, we, we were very quite clear the the metronome, you know, represented the CEO and team that was fiercely committed to evolving their behavior and growing the company they want. That's a key ingredient, of course. The uh, you know graph that we drew that had the nice Canadian hockey stick in it, you know, up and to the right, um, was you know the one that those are the results everyone's looking for, including myself as a young CEO and first time, first company, second company, and all the companies I'm working with are looking for growth. So we said, okay, that's a good picture. The third one around the widget was you know, really defining what that meant. And what that means and how it ties the two things together is taking that CEO plus leadership team that's fiercely committed to growing and connecting them to the secret sauce of it all, which is the widget, the things they can control each and every day. And if we can actually forecast that out from here to three years out, right, the widgets, a lot of people go, you're going to forecast that three years out. And the answer is yes, but we can connect that to the team and what they do every day and to the behavior. I was alluded, alluded for many years as a CEO of what the word alignment meant. I didn't really realize it's behavioral alignment. And maybe I was slow and late to the party, but behavioral alignment is all about committing to the team result finding a repeatable practical system that we can all use, play on the field together, have a scoreboard of widgets that we're going to look at every day to make sure we're on or off and make better, faster decisions together. So those three words, metronomes, you know, make sense for metro and nomics. Uh, metrics is also represented there and economics, you know, is represented by the outcome. And so uh, it's funny when I wrote the book Metronomics, it wasn't late in, it was quite way late into it that the publisher finally asked me, they said, how did you come up with the word metronomics? And I actually don't explain it until the last chapter in the book. And they said, why did you wait so long to explain it? I said, well, I didn't want anyone to think it was a fad or a gimmick. I wanted people to understand that it's a predictable, practical, 
prescriptive, lots of P's, thank goodness for that <laughs> S's, because I can't say S's, progression, right? It is a progression. And so, you know, I didn't want anyone to think that, you know, this is, you know, a made up word, and then we wrote a book about it. It's the opposite. And the thing about the progression and the other word that we use in the book that we wanted to use a little bit different from a system. It is a system and you, once you get the system in place, you'll forget about the system. The system will run itself and you will focus in on your business. But it's a regimen to get going, a health regimen. Not a regiment, not a regime, but a regimen. And the regimen is allowed to be iterative and practical and we can adjust it. That's why we picked that word. Because in health, we do lots of health regimens, right? And True. for you know, to you know, make us healthier, and we want to make the company healthier, so we grow, we get better. That's what we do a health regimen for. That's the same thing with metronomics. And if you've got everything in alignment, you've got everybody heading in that one direction. Yeah. And, you know, there's a, I think it's Jim Collins that put this out there is 1% plan, 99% alignment. And I might have the thought leader who, where I saw that first. And, and I bought into that. I was like, yep, it doesn't take long to write that plan down, right? We can do it. Good. Got it. Okay. And then it was 99% alignment. I was like, yep, I have to spend time aligning the team. But what I didn't understand is, is that I needed to spend time creating a cohesive, culturally strong team that behaves, you know, their behavior aligns to that metric. And that if I can do that as a CEO and a coach of a team, it's going to unlock, you know, the plan and being able and it connects to the plan. And it's the thing, you know, that's where that metric comes in. It's that thing that connects everything to the plan we can have this highly cohesive culturally strong team and not win the game Absolutely. we can have the best plan in the world and not win the game but if they're connected you know the zipper approach how you zip those two things together is through the widget the clear priorities and the open playing field and of course the the key of it all and it, it you know i fell into it out of desperation of trying to get to where we said we would go is a three-year highly achievable goal. It creates the urgency and the human willingness to be right. Once you write it down, you want to make it right. And what do you do? You figure out how with your team, not by yourself. And what's interesting here, unless you've got it zippered up, as you put it, then you probably fall into the ter Patrick Lencioni's territory of politics, silos, and turf wars. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you have that. That's why it becomes so prevalent in so many businesses where people are just building their silos because it's not zippered up. Yeah. And, you know, the thing, I, I'm a huge Pat Lencioni groupie and lived through all his books. I was growing up my first company and into my second company. And the thing that I love about that side of it is, we, you know, when we think of this as uh, developing a team, you know, we develop a team cohesively. We get to a certain level, we go up and up and up. It's, you know, when we get together, we're going to form it, we storm it, right? We norm it, we perform, right? And that's really nice. And that's out of, you know, research from, I think it's Bruce Tuckman from the 1960s, right? It's, it's been around for a long time. But then if you, so that's the team development side. But then if you overlay the hard edge, right? So the strategy, execution, and cash, and the results you get, when you're bringing those together, you have to balance it and progress it together. And that's the thing we try and brute force and brute force. And like, it just, it doesn't work at all. And it actually, as you say, it separates us further. But if we can actually, you know, be aware that our team is always going to form, norm, uh, form, storm, norm, and perform. And over that, if we can connect it, once we get to a, a normalized state of cohesiveness and we connect it to the plan, that's where we get a high performing team. And I don't say a high performance team. I always say high performing. They will perform year over year over year. It's actually why when I look at my clients today and I'm celebrating 10 years as a, a coach um, and my clients are nine years old, eight years old, like I've had them the whole time. And the thing is, is that 
do they have a hockey stick up into the right for the last nine years? Absolutely. You know, did they fire me as a coach because they're winning? No. You don't fire a coach because you're winning. You fire a coach because you did or you weren't able to put it together. And and you know, that's fine. That happens, right? But this system over and over and over again helps you easily meet where you are, wherever you are on your on the spectrum of team and plan and pulls it together. And it's the most amazing thing. I mean, it's why I get up every day. I'm retired or reprired. Um, and why I get up every day is to do this. I mean, it's just so fun. I suppose it helps you instead of having a, well, a world-class team of players, it helps you create a world-class playing team. Yes. And most people, when they go out there to do their recruitment, they're looking for just those world-class players. And they often don't perform as that world-class team. Yeah, no, you're, you're, that is well said. And, you know, I was sort of uh, annoyed uh, the first, year, first four years into my first business. And, you know, we had this great plan, strategy, tons of investment in our business, like VCs all over us. And uh, we took it, we had a plan and, and we weren't, you know, how this all happened is because we weren't delivering on the plan. And the funniest thing is, is that, you know, I had experienced what you just described on sports teams. We, you know, some of the, the my most memorable sports teams of high performing sport teams reaching to the top level, we didn't have a few MVPs on the team, like the top players. We had a group of us that was willing to work together to win. It sounds so cliche, it's true. but it, that's how it works. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's all about team. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for explaining that, Shannon. Yeah, you're very welcome. Super now, fun. Now, if you have got value out of today's episode, you like it, please subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Share it so that other people can benefit from it. And if you have any questions, please head over to balka.com and get in touch once again shannon thank you very much for coming in today and remember everyone failing to learn is learning to fail please stay safe